Hey, what's up? It's Zach, and I'm back in Adobe Illustrator today. Um, I just wanted, this is all done in time lapse, first of all, and I just wanted to kind of explain some of what was going on. Like right now, I'm using the blend tool and just uh, creating lines across that, across the background. Uh, I went ahead and put my sketch layer on 50% opacity, I think, on top, and then I have a layer for my black, my colors, and my background. Um, that's all pretty standard stuff that I do. Um, as far as the sketch, um, that's actually a mixture of like add-ons, uh, just some Photoshop stuff, and uh, a couple files that I have that kind of set everything up for you that I've created. Um, if you're interested in learning more about those or you know, getting some of those for free, I give away a bunch of that stuff on a Patreon, so um, there'll be a link for that below as in the end of the video. Um, so yeah, right now I'm just kind of getting in broad colors, you know. Uh, this red blue effect is actually really easy to get. If you go into Photoshop and just uh, use like duplicate a layer, use hue saturation on one, make one kind of red, one kind of blue, and then just mess with the opacity and um, blending modes, and you'll get something kind of creepy. Uh, <laughs> that's the best way I can describe it. You'll get something that's a little glitchy, and then I, you can just come into Illustrator and kind of use that as a reference. On a lot of these uh, sketches, as you can see, I'm kind of like messing around, like messing with uh, the way paint would actually run down a face or something, and really just kind of uh, messing around with exaggerating some of these glitch effects, and um, really just trying to get a different, a different effect than I did just from the uh, Photoshop filter or Photoshop effect. Um, so you'll see me going back and forth. Uh, looking at the sketch, looking at this, trying to figure out what I want to do. Um, also, <laughs> for some reason, uh, Illustrator crashed a bunch during this, I'm not sure. Uh, so if there are any abrupt pauses, it's probably because uh, my program is not responding and I am cursing at it. But uh, one of my favorite things that I've been doing recently is that grid in the background and kind of shading along that. As you can see, I'm like, um, making these very sharp points and kind of like glitchy things that come off of everything. And a lot of that is I just, uh, if it's a light color, I'll align it to the top of the grid and just make it come to a point there. And then uh, if it's a dark color, obviously align to the bottom and come to a point there. And it kind of gives it a consistent shading. And so a lot of it looks super detailed because I'm going back and forth, but really I'm just like holding shift and clicking straight lines half the time. And so it's really, really fast once you get used to it. Uh, I'm sure there's an easier way to do it with the blend tool and stuff, but this is kind of just, I'm wanting to mix a bunch of textures together at once. So this kind of allows me to like, not have to worry about uh, every blend lining up exactly with that grid in the back or anything. So I can kind of be a lot more free. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff that's honestly just me clicking back and forth trying to get that uh, grid looking thing or glitch looking effect um, I also like to it's I don't do it as much anymore and I should just for visual purposes but something that helps quite a bit is to get um, liquid textures and stuff like that if you're going for a similar look and just set those next to your illustrator document and it gives you something to reference so you can be like if you, if you can't recall from memory how water would drip around certain things or how to pseudo make things look like they're dripping, then it gives you something to reference. And I do that anytime I'm trying to figure out a new effect. Like if I was recently doing rocks for something and uh, it was really handy to find some like very creative ways to draw textures for rocks and just set those to the side to have to look at. That way I can pull those in if I need and a lot of what I'm doing revolves around the Pathfinder tool. Um, Pathfinder tool and transparencies, those are two huge things for me. Uh, Pathfinder is just like you see, I keep drawing shapes and then at the, at the end I'll add it um, or merge it with whatever that is, like whatever's next to it. So that I keep all my blue shapes together, I keep all my red shapes together and I'm just constantly adding everything together or subtracting. And that way I have as few actual shapes as possible. I keep everything kind of uniform and I know where, like, I try to keep track of where everything's at, like, um, layer wise, I try to know what's towards the bottom, what's towards the top. And sometimes if you, if you can't keep up with that as well, a lot of times I'll add like a base color, a mid color and a top color layer. That way, um, 
if you're more used to using like Photoshop and stuff and you really like to layer your colors and layer blending modes and things like that, this is an easy way to get like a similar effect. You won't get, you know, you can't do quite as crazy as stuff with um, blends and stuff in Illustrator, but you can get some decent stuff. Uh, right now I'm just using the uh, blend tool. I'm actually just experimenting and that ends up going in the background. Uh, you can get some crazy like glitch looking effects literally by just drawing random shapes and blending them together and just m moving them around and you'll get some very surprising results with that uh, just like this. I It happened to fit the grid in the background very well and so I just rolled with it. Uh, also what you're seeing is <laughs> since I'm not going exactly up to sketch, half of this I redraw like five times and uh, in my defense Illustrator did crash like twice and so some of this stuff I just like accidentally I'll put behind an object and forget it's there and then redraw it again so I actually had to edit some of that out because I just drew shapes multiple times um and I get asked quite a bit about how to draw like liquid things and unfortunately it's not something that's just like a tutorial on how to draw that you can just read about liquid and then everything is solved um a lot of this is just trial and error and really just faking it uh but some good ways to like expand your visual vocabulary I would say would be to uh, take some real life stuff uh, I've scanned in watercolor like textures that I've made before and use that and then just literally trace it um, just 100% that way it's muscle memory you understand like how pieces come off and then just try to really work on that and get that as um, you know ingrained in as possible that you just understand how water moves and then it makes everything else pretty easy. Like, and you don't even have to make things perfect. The cool thing with water is it's so unpredictable that you can just do a lot of different stuff and it looks, you know, close. And <laughs> if it looks close, people just kind of accept it. Um, as far as, uh, like, if you aren't drawing on paper or anything, I would, uh, waves effect in Photoshop is pretty good for uh, glitch stuff, but for liquid stuff, I would say um, the liquify tool is really helpful. You can even um, take uh, specific channels of a photo, so you could take just the red channel and drip that down with the um, liquify tool. That's, um, that's something that can be pretty helpful. There's a lot of cool things you can do. Uh, it, Photoshop, Illustrator, like really kind of um, adding these two together if you if you don't understand quite how to get some of those liquid effects um so what you're seeing is really me just playing with opacities and stuff that has a lot to do with it because he's as you can see um, most things i do aren't opaque um i like to like show a little bit what's behind it you get it gives it a lot of depth like even if it shows where i mess up it also shows like Yo, I made like five different layers here and it's all this different stuff and it's all this different drawing and I think it kind of brings out like a lot of character to stuff. Uh, also, I like never really erase. I just draw black over things, which I don't know. I guess it's just kind of like from being in a hurry. I don't know where that came from per se, but um, hairs hair is pretty easy, I think, like as far as stuff like that. Um, it's just random shapes and if once you learn once again visual like the your visual muscle memory of what you can draw just kind of like once you practice that a few times and especially with the pen tool because it's so easy to get like these super fine lines and stuff that hairs shouldn't be too bad honestly i'm just winging most of this from practicing um that right there like once again me just following the grid this isn't anything crazy it's mainly uh, and then right there I also use the divide pathfinder once again the same couple tools just use over and over and over and I just have a good framework there's this rule I forget who said it I'm horrible but it's like the 80 20 and it's like 20 percent of the work or 20 percent of the work it equals 80 percent of the result and then that other 80% of the work obviously only equals 20% of the result. And pretty much what this means to me is that you need to have a clear direction of where you're going in the beginning. Um, I would say take your time on sketching, take your time on all that. The Illustrator stuff um, I think is kind of the 
fun part and the vectoring is where you really get to see things come alive but you really need to take a lot of time um, working on composition and making everything uh, look good from the beginning that way you have a clear path of where you're going um, but yeah so I could pretty much fiddle on this all day but um, I think I just I stopped pretty soon after getting it to an okay spot uh, thank you so much for checking the video out it means a lot um, if you have any uh, questions or don't quite understand anything I know like watching this super fast and time-lapse isn't exactly the best way to understand things so you know just hit me up if you have any questions I'll be glad to help like I said um, there is a link to my patreon if you want you don't want to <laughs> you don't as much care about how it's done and you just want some source files and want you know some effects um, so yeah there'll be a link to that uh, once again thanks and have a good day